Hi guys, it is a gorgeous winter night here in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas on this chilly Monday night, January 29th, 2018. But we are heading down to probably as well chilly Ocala, Florida to bring you the latest edition of Voices from the Doomosphere. And, you know, I have all sorts of world famous uh, eco Nazis beating down the door to have me interview them, but I'm telling them no because we have a special edition uh, tonight going directly up against this. Going to be, we're going to run this uh, Tuesday, January 30th, going directly up against Donald Trump's State of the Union address. And I am thrilled to admit, to not admit, to introduce. Someone I just met a few nights ago, my very last night in uh, my, my very last night in the state of Florida, I got together with Alert Tribes member Sandy K. We have two sister Sandys. This is the, the, Sandy K is, is like the southern version of, of Sister Sandy from New York. So we, we've got two Sandys now. Just so you understand, this is the southern version. This is Georgia girl Sandy Kay, and good lord, this woman has a story. Uh, all I know is she uh, dropped into this. Uh, this she she is a former clueless moron, uh, just going about her daily life um, in TV and commercials or whatever she was up to for years, and somehow started falling down into all sorts of rabbit holes and. So she's going to tell us a little bit about that. She's not going to spend an hour. She's going to spend five minutes telling us, Sandy Cave from Marietta, Georgia. I want you to say hi to the tribe and tell us all how a nice southern girl like you fell into a rabbit hole like this. Take it away, Sandy. Well, I don't know how nice I am, especially these days. But thank you, Hambone, and I'm um, glad to be here with the Humpty Dumpty tribe. All right, uh, you're making history, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the uh, the analogy with the northern sister Sandy and the southern sister Sandy. That's fantastic. And what was the question? <laughs> the question is, and how did a nice southern girl like you uh, the go from being a clueless moron uh, just being a regular old American, doing what right. she's doing with her life. How did you get down this eco-Nazi rabbit hole? What, what, what right. the hell happened to you? Uh, probably similar to the path many of us have, have been on and can relate to, um, I would think. Uh, I was brought up in a very traditional, all-American, Southern Bible Belt, uh, cultural, social, famil familial uh, setting. And uh, I had some questions going on in my little head when I was probably a preteen, but it takes a long time in a setting like that to, you know, venture out of your head with it. Um, and, and as I grew older, I, I just kept seeing things more different than the people around me were seeing them, and I recognized that. I'm, as long as I can remember, um, I, I sort of came into this as, I, I guess you would call it, eco-Nazi environmentalist, seeing a lot of things going, going wrong around us uh, on a global scale. And I think no matter what... Well, what have, year are we talking about? What year did you start pulling your head out of your ass, would you say? Way back or just fairly recently? Well, the, the environmental issues were just with me as long as I can remember, when I, I mean, since I was a child. Uh, but to, cut, to, to get my head out of my ass, that was a slow, uh, fragmented process. But I would say, you know, in my 20s, and then it progressed from there, um, as far as any real rabbit holes that we fell in, probably the last 8 to 10 years progressively turned a big corner there. Um, and, and that's what I was going to say. I think that um, people come from all kinds of avenues into where we are sitting here today as a tribe, uh, whether it's political, uh, environmental, whatever grabbed your attention. Once that you're, you're plugged into a, a, an issue, everything's so matrixed together that you're eventually going to to uh, fall into these other rabbit holes next door. You know, everything leads to something else. It's all woven together. And that's the best way I could describe what happened to me. 
I had no idea what I was in for as I started digging around a little bit, you know. So you uncover, you know, one, lift one rock up after another. So and, can we tell how old you are now? Yeah, I'm uh, in my 56th year, I like to say, because... Uh, so you're double nickel, you're 55. Yeah, I'm 55 as of a few months ago. So I'm, I'm in my 56th year now. So you started getting an idea back in your 20s uh, mm -hmm. that, that things were a little bit amiss, but you really started getting getting down in what, what we call the rabbit hole about eight or nine years ago, did I hear you say? To, to, to the significant, you know, if, if you look at different levels of things in your life and, and where your energy and attention is going, um, it, it came in fragments until one day I realized what I was in. <laughs> was, there, was there one particular defining moment that you, that you said, fuck, this is worse than I ever thought? Yes, I'm sure there was. I wish I had a better answer. I know that there was. Um, if, if I could define, you know, when you get into the, what the government really is about, the shadow government behind the government, uh, <laughs> you know, when, when you come up and you're mixed up in this cultural indoctrination and, and, and I think that's something you and I will get into before this, this is over tonight, um, is the discovery phase of this hell and what it does to people psychologically, um, you know, which varies, but some people take a harder hit than others, and it's it's not a fun uh, pool to be swimming in. So we need some ammo, we need some coping skills, you know, and I had to go through a lot of that myself. I've been through quite a, what I refer to as the discovery phase, and the discovery phase can have a handful of chapters in it, you know, and yes, as you indicated, there's usually a turning point there somewhere, there's some big corner uh where you realize that it's just so big and it's so broad and it, it's so deep and wide that um you have to start examining the the parts of your life that you you're you at the time maybe were still living in the matrix uh still living a large chunk of your life as a clueless fucking moron and the day comes that that has to end and you have to face what comes with that choice and that reality <laughs> now I, I don't hear anything what you're saying now are the conversation that we had a, a, a few nights ago. Uh, okay. Now, of course, with, with my story, this is your rant, did you, did you do anything at all? I mean, a big part of my initial earth shattering was, was getting into Terrence McKenna and, and getting into mushrooms oh. and, and yeah. Saint P and San Pedro cactus and ayahuasca and, and all of that stuff. Did you ever go down that road and to really shatter your worldview or you've never really pursued that? I have never really pursued that um, to this date. But but um, I, I think the path that, that I could reiterate for you is, um, as I said, but because of my environmental interest and, and the uh, tentacles associated with that, and I was interested in, you know, what's the heck with all this ufology and, and all, you know, all of that esoteric stuff. I was always very interested in, and curious about what's going on here with that. So I ended up. Uh, I spent a considerable amount of my life listening to, to uh, Art Bell on Coast to Coast. Oh, yeah, Coast to Coast, oh yeah. Coast to Coast, I spent about a year listening to, to Art <laughs> Bell every night. And uh, then that segued into about a year of taking in Mr. Alex Jones. Um, you lasted and, a year, I lasted about a year with Alex. Yeah, and... Um, I learned a lot from these endeavors, but there is... And I think people could benefit from recognizing this for themselves at times. There's a time to move on. There's a time to take what you got from that yeah. and serve what you don't need from that and move on and graduate, you know, to, to the next phase of these things. But so I went from uh, Art Bell to Alex Jones to somewhere in there. We got this thing called Internet and Facebook and social media and um, so, so then you jump on in that pool, and that's eighteen. And you end up with Hamba and Little Tail. I, I, you know, with 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 Art Bell and Alex Jones being my opening act, I'm. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> so uh, there, there you go. That's the natural progression. Uh, Art Bell, Alex Jones, Hamlin, Little Town. So how did you find Hunt Me, Dump Me, Tribe? Do you even remember when you what? what? Yeah. I, I mentioned this to you the other night that um, I, I just recall that after that phase we just described, I ended up uh, working on a rather large and intense conspiracy truther page. And um, I, I put a lot of work out there, but I learned so much as I was working on that. And somewhere in that stage of things, it's where, you know, digging around, doing some research on God knows what for the, uh, the truther page, I stumbled on this crazy ass dude sitting on a rock yelling at every fucking thing. <laughs> and I was like, hey, who is this awesome guy? And <laughs> so, and, so you go all the way back to the rock. I mean, you, you've been here, been around a long time. She remembers the rock in South Austin, I Texas. I, I remember even some uh, uh, videos you uploaded from inside the trailer. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're talking five plus years ago. All right. <laughs> A long time. The Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and I have been subbed to the Humpty Dumpty Tribe ever since, uh, probably sometime in 2012. All right, um, we appreciate it. So, okay, so you've been, if you've been uh, down, and so if you've been here since 2012, so let's get to, you know, the, the basic framework of my, and I don't consider these interviews, I consider these casual conversations. The first question to you, Sandy, after your amount of studying, and obviously you're an intelligent, articulate woman who uh, who sounds to me like voraciously uh, gets down into, gets down and dirty with this stuff, after, at this point in your analysis of the situation, A, this two-part question, A, are we fucked? And B, if we are fucked, how fucked are we? Um, my response to that, Mr. Littletail, would be, um, yes, we are fucked. Yes, but. But. It, it would be the real answer. Yes, but. What's the but? What's the but? Well, yes, we're fucked, but that is not a, a finite into things that's not where we stop this that's that you know saying we're fucked does not mean that uh we just give up and walk away we don't lay it down there you go, there you go. that's not how now we do that. have you changed something on one of your settings on your side because i'm getting an echo back are you i, I can't hear it now are you still hearing it okay all right that seemed to take it. something happened there with one of us i haven't done anything so I wasn't hearing it, so it probably okay. It seems to have, that seems to have been temporary. So uh, you're 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 not gonna. Well, you know my sign, which is a quote from uh, Derek Jensen uh, from Endgame. We are so fucked, and the operative word in those four words, the most important word, is the word "so." Is the one that he that that he put in italics. So we are so fucked. Are we to the so fucked point or, or not quite? I think we're so fucked. I think we're so fucked. But there's a way to uh, embrace that reality without it being a dark, negative, you know, end all, be all. I mean, there's a lot going on here. And, and it, it's, it's, there's, there are wheels in motion. It's a so fucked uh, mechanism that is in constant motion. Because, so as long as that mechanism is in motion, there are influences to be, uh, you know, integrated into it. Does that make sense? It, yeah, I, 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 want, I, I want to arrive here uh, in, uh, in about another 10 or 15 minutes. Well, give us, you know, you're going directly up against uh, Donald Trump. Literally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting this video up right about the time Donald Trump doing his State of the Union. Now tomorrow, I will be doing my annual Hambone State of the Planet uh, address. Give us your your five minutes. Uh, you can even go ten minutes on this. What is the uh, the Sandy K State of the Planet 2018 address? What is the State of the Planet? Uh, the state of the planet 
not prepared for this, so bear with me. Uh, first of all, there's there's too much divide uh, across the globe. Um, a lot of it is by design, and that's something that we, in on an individual, community, and um, global, international basis, need to work on dissolving. That does not mean pretend that things aren't there, but we need to work around and over those boundaries and, and divides as a collective species on the big ball. We need to think more in those terms. How are we going to do that? Because, um, as you say, I, I, we're, we're getting more divided every single day, as far as I can tell, every single day. The, the division among everybody. Uh, I think that it's important for people to uh, use some critical thinking skills and discernment and understand that those divides that are getting worse every day are being very much spoon fed, you know, into certain cultures and societies uh, by design very deliberately. You know, there's an agenda here with that. So our job and our agenda is to start at the core level by example of your own uh, consciousness and your own attitude towards the people around you, uh, living by example. Uh, instead of getting so quick to get into the left-right paradigm battles and arguments, they love it when we do that. And that's where I go back and say, don't, don't pretend it's not there. But there are bigger issues that we can work with our, you know, across the aisle adversaries on. Uh, if we put the differences aside and the arguments aside for a while, live by example of how you see the, the condition of the planet and the condition of the species and the influence of the species that is us uh, and, and what we're doing on a global scale to the planet and who we're allowing to do things to it against our better judgment and better will and against our, our uh, ideals. So work with everybody around you. Uh, I think I see a lot of people, especially with this god dang social media and these groups and, and message board forums, that people can just get in there and just start attacking. A lot of it's, you know, initiated deliberately. Um, that's a waste of energy. That, that's, uh, to me, that's a waste of energy. You're, neither one's going to start convincing either one of all this, you know, divide and conquer shit. Uh, move around that, move past that, and, and show by example how you plan to do your part here and why. And people will see that and pick up on that. You'll plant seeds out there. You're not going to win every battle you get into over it. Um, and people ask you why you live your weird life this way or that way or make these bizarre choices that make no sense to them. Don't get in an argument about it with them. Don't uh, shove it down their throat. You're just going to send them away. You're just going to be the tinfoil hat wearer, the weirdo, and they're just going to go on with their bullshit, clueless fucking moron life. What you do is calmly explain to them why you think the way you do. Just plant a seed. Don't shove it down their throat. They're not going to accept that. Plant a seed. Let them walk away because there will be other seeds that they stumble on and eventually that <laughs> grow into something. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. Uh, well, uh, that, that, that's good advice. I should probably take some of that, uh, that advice to heart myself. Now, of course, I just, just put it on YouTube. For anybody, uh, I mean that that that's my role in here. I, I honestly don't. I, I don't have this conversation with with my friends. I have no interest in uh, in in bringing people that I know in my quote real daily life down this rabbit hole. Uh, how how was this since you got down here? How would you say your own? Your your own uh, social life, family life, uh, what other aspects of your life? How has it affected your life? Wow, um, it definitely has affected it. Um, it. Probably similar to a lot of us, I've gone through the phase where I needed to, you know, and again, this goes back to that discovery phase where you're learning just how deep the shit goes. 
and you want to jump on a soapbox and you want to, everybody around you to understand what you now understand. And then there, there's the shock factor when they don't accept it. You know, I've, I've sent uh, links and links and links to, to family members, you know, about <laughs> fiat currency and, and and all the things that I was learning back then a few years ago. And it's crickets. It's just crickets. There's like, how can you even look at that and not have a question, a comment, a response, nothing? There comes a point where you start picking your battles. And that goes back to what I said a few minutes ago with certain people like that. If it's family members, and, you just, and, and I've seen this go on a lot too in the truther movement, people have destroyed their family relationships over this. It's not worth it. Stop fighting. Stop shoving it on those people. Just live by your own example. They'll start looking at you sideways and, and a little curious, and start thinking twice about you know what they what they do know of of your ideals about this, and your purpose in it, and leave it at that. You know you you will it'll get to the people that are receptive to it on, on whatever level they're going to receive it. But don't destroy your family life. Don't destroy your social life. Um, Everybody has to find their own comfort zone. A lot of people are, are not comfortable alone and isolated, and that's where a lot of us end up eventually. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> that, girl. <laughs> no, but, but there's a whole psychological, um, you know, way to cope with that. But everybody's wired different. Uh, I love solitude. I love being alone. Um, I don't have this whole lonely thing going on. But a lot of, of people that are distracted by the thought of being alone uh, to the point that that's what drives them is, is figuring out how to not be alone, whether it's friends, partners, romance, whatever. A lot of that is indoctrinated into people too. And, and I'm not knocking it. There's wonderful marriages, wonderful families out there. I'm, I'm happy for these people to have that. But if it's a need thing that's driving you because there's something missing in your own um, independence of being, then this gets to something I was going to bring up, you know, at some point in our conversation. Bring about, it on up. Okay. About, about how to cope with the condition of the planet and the condition of our world around us as an individual. And this just segues me right into that. Um, is, is that how we fight back about this, what we do about this as an individual is starting right there as a friggin' individual Start with your own foundation. Start with your own uh, relationships around you and your relationship with yourself. That is where I, I see a lot of these hardcore truthers, man, out there kicking and screaming and just doing amazing work, and they're brilliant, and their life is a wreck. Yeah. <laughs> their, their health is a wreck. Their, their psychological, mental, emotional health is a wreck because they don't have that solid foundation. Uh, of self and um, okayness and, and happy and balance. So I, I would I would suggest that is start right at home. And if it, it, it even, okay, when, when we're dealing with what we're learning out there, what we have learned, this whole discovery phase of, of learning these rabbit holes and, and how evil some of the shit is that's going on around us and, and running our world, um, is study a little bit about you know, uh, personality disorders, study a little bit about narcissistic personality disorders and uh, psychopaths and sociopaths. And you will start to learn about some of the people close around you, whether it's coworkers, uh, employers, family members who are influencing you in a very negative way. Wow. And sometimes it's very covert and sometimes you don't understand where all this negativity is, but it's, it's, you're absorbing it all. Get rid of all that. Learn how to deal with that in your own little sphere first. And I think that builds a good, um, safe foundation for you to take a, a healthy stance on the bigger picture and how you want to work with the bigger picture out there and how you want to influence things on a bigger scale. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sounds like a good program, but but actually putting what you just said in, in, into practice, what, how does that look on uh, on a daily basis? How does that look on a daily basis? As far as your give, daily, give us give, give us give us your day. Uh, 
just, just from day to day living, uh, mm. how how much time of your day do, would you say do you spend? Still, I mean, it's a never-ending discovery stage. I mean, things are speeding up so quick. I mean, it's just, as, as I call it, this tsunami of shit that's building here in 2018. Just trying to, just to, just to barely stay up with this a speeding up tidal wave heading our way can, can, eat, can eat your whole day. How much time do you actually spend on what you call the discovery stage before you before you reach that you just get maxed out and say I've got to shut this damn computer down and, and you know yeah that happens to me regularly I've accepted that as a, as a regular cycle in my day-to-day -day life um, I, I probably like a lot of us got baptized in fire a couple of times you know before I decided you know what um, I'm not going to last long like this. You know, I'm not going to. The longevity is not going to be there. I mean, there's times that the depression of it all just caves in on you so yeah. bad you can't even function. And when you are depressed and, and when you're struggling with, with so much negativity that you have to digest every single day on such a large scale, um, you can only sustain that so long before you're either just going to fall off a cliff. And <laughs> my big question to, to myself is, if you keep circling that fucking drain and you don't do something about it and you don't build that foundation you need, that's where that difference comes in is that uh, with that foundation being intact. If you keep circling that drain, what good are you to the Humpty Dumpty tribe? You know, what, what good are you going to do to make a difference in this shit storm tsunami that's going on so if you want to be a part of improving that a part of doing something first of all you start with your own little day-to-day -day, uh decisions and choices and lifestyle and, and and it matters it seems like when you recycle that one little hard piece of plastic it, it you know it, it doesn't even exist in the big world of, of toxic pollution that's going on and, and uh, abuse and materialism and waste and consumerism, oh God. But the way I look at that, I'm digressing a little bit, the way that I look at that when I think, oh, I try so hard to save and this and that and recycle and upcycle and make sure my carbon footprint is, why am I even bothering with this? That can get very depressing. Because you feel like you're you're invisible, you're nothing, you're not making a dent. Well, you when just you you, you 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 do that, you get your damn solar panels, your electric car, what? Got your vegan lifestyle. And, and then you turn on the damn mainstream media news. And, 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 and you just look at, at China and India, as I was saying today. I, I was talking about China, saying if everyone else on the fucking planet died tomorrow, China with no help. And, and then you can say in, in five years, you'll be able to say if China dies, if India is still around. You know, what, what, what can you do in Ocala, Florida? What can I do in Austin, Texas with recycling and, and, and whatnot? When, when you look at this juggernaut that, yeah, that is building, it just... Um, when you feel, the, feel a, a sense of futile, you know. Yeah. Not, being futile, the way that I frame that is I think what matters to me is how I lived while I was here. What matters to me is when I go, when I'm done with this godforsaken thing you live in, I want, I go knowing that I, I do it for me. I do it for yeah. my yeah. You know, foundation that we're building. That's why. So vote with your wallet for the love of God. Every time that you go out <laughs> shopping, and you need to feed yourself and you need to take care of your homestead or whatever you're doing. Start right there. If you're kicking and screaming in the truth or moving all over Facebook groups and argument forums and you're whatever, Alex Jones, stuff, if, if you're immersed in that and yet you're trashing the planet and trashing your body the whole time you're doing that, things are way out of balance. Build the foundation at home. When you go out and shop, vote with your wallet every single time. It, it, things are getting so much better out there as far as making food choices. Uh, when you stop buying GMO, when you spend a dollar more to buy a jar of organic salsa versus the uh, GMO crap, that vote every single time. Don't think that it isn't. Now, I, do, 
I, 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 I'm, I'm going to admit this publicly. Uh, <laughs> You're good at that. I, I just, uh, it, it all started with those damn crystal hamburgers. I've been on a, uh, I've been a backsliding to Eco Nazi ever since those fucking crystal hamburgers. I just voted five dollars on a. Uh, uh, on a Walmart chicken from a uh, from a factory farm, I just consumed for my dinner tonight a, a five dollar chicken that I picked up at Walmart. And been there, done that. Don't be a pure. You can be a purist. My hats off to for the purist out there, the militant vegans. Okay, but <laughs> I guess stole that term from you. Uh, and we're my... not going to get into that conversation. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But when you vote with your wallet, you're voting, obviously, with everything you don't buy just as much as yeah. what you do. So these little things, guys, these little day-to-day -day lifestyle choices makes a difference in your own life, in your own time and space and air that you breathed and took up here on this planet. Make that matter. Start right there with those little things. Start with those little shopping trips. Um, it, it, you can change just little things and some things seem a little inconvenient because we've gotten so used to our conveniences. It's the culture we live in for crying out loud. Oh, yeah. Make a choice to step back from that. And, and if it's a little awkward, you know, at first, it's a little inconvenient to do things this way or that way, get over it. It'll become nothing but a, a, a knee-jerk second instinct the way you do things once you change them. When it's new, it feels overwhelming. And you don't, I, I'm trying to be careful how I word myself here. You, you don't have to be a friggin' purist about it. Make the changes. Do what's comfortable for you. Do it in, in increments and in segments. And, you know, I'm here talking to whatever audience that, that you're pulling in on this. And there's going to be people here in this that are like way advanced past me as far as it. <laughs> Their diet and lifestyle choices, we're all a work in progress. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not preaching to those people. I appreciate those people, and they're out there setting examples for the rest of us, you know, to adhere to. But So if, if you know that your foundation is not intact or it's cracked or it's missing chunks, you know who you are, it, you know, it, it, how you're living day to day. Clean up the relationships around you. Clean up the toxicity in relationships, in people, in, in, in anything that's coming into your life that is adding negativity to your day, to your week, to your year, to your life. Look at it. Well, Look what's, at what's it. adding the, the, the word, the word uh, negativity, which I would say is adding reality, is just attending to what is going on. I, I mean, so... How how can you? That's a tall order. Uh, how can you uh, limit the the quote negativity in your life if you're honest with yourself about uh, about the reality of the situation? I mean, you just sent me this this little cartoon earlier today. Uh, the, the the glasses and half empty or half full. The gla the the glasses is it, is it, just piss. It's not water, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so so how do you let this information? And and I say it, it's more and more just on the mainstream media news now. I mean, it's unbelievable yeah. what I've noticed in the mainstream media news over the past five years. How how much of this stuff is finding its way. Uh, uh, in, into Yahoo News every morning. So how do you... You need to attend to it, but you, but you see what I'm saying? This is the balance that, that I have never been able to achieve. Uh, how can you attend to this without becoming... You know, my, my question in every one of these interviews is how can you attend to this and be honest with 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 yourself about what we're looking at, and and not end up like yeah. like Michael Rupert in the lifeboat hour, and yeah. and shutting down the lifeboat and sticking a gun in your face and blowing your head and blowing your brains out. Loving Michael Rupert, oh my lord, that man, what a hero. Um, yeah, yeah, denial is is not you know the way we want to go here. Uh, you acknowledge and embrace the reality of what it's piss. Okay, you, you don't look at the mainstream news or even the alternative news 
uh, and, and say, oh, look, the glass is half full or it's half empty. No, the glass has piss in it. You know, that uh, meme that I sent you was, was a, a description of realist. That was the yeah. name of that, that little cartoon meme was real. Be a realist. How do you assimilate all this negativity? Um, how do you find, and this is, this is the key word to me, is balance. And that's when I thought, you know, I'm ready to go off a cliff here. I, I just can't, I, I cannot digest any more of this shit. I can't wake up and look out at, at what's going on around me and know that I can't carry all this anymore. Yeah, it's getting tough. Um, it went, I start looking at balance. Okay, if I'm feeling consumed by this negativity, uh, we feel like the, the proverbial David and Goliath war, you know, every single day. We, you know, we're, we're just going up against these monstrous beasts. Uh, balance, balance, balance. How much, how many hours a day, how much of your time and energy are you assimilating this, this horror show? Um, where is the balance with what you love and enjoy about being a uh, your meat suit here? Uh, if you're right-brained, and, and a lot of us are, uh, driven to, to work with music, to work with art, to work with something creative. You know when you are doing something that gives your soul goosebumps, whether it's gardening and, and yard work, or whether it's painting something beautiful, or whether it's painting something ugly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Just feed yourself. Balance yourself. Understand what your foundation looks like when it's healthy and balanced. And so just stand back and assess the, the positive, negative, what's getting fed, what's not, what's getting too fed, what's getting you starved to death, you know, that makes me a, a balanced whole person. And I still have to, I mean, I just cycle through this constantly and I've accepted that. I've, and when I do get depressed, when it does get too heavy, I struggle with health problems myself, chronic health problems. Um, sometimes I just allow myself that. Sometimes I just shut down and shutting down. And I want to say this, Hambone, shutting down, getting depressed, embracing being depressed and the reasons why you're depressed. It's a fine line. It's a gray area. But if you embrace that and allow yourself as a human being processing the tsunami of shit all the time, then go ahead and be depressed a little bit. Know the tipping point of when you, you're you going too far <laughs> off the cliff. I mean, you know, when, when you start spiraling so deep that you're not going to come out of it or something horrible is going to happen, um, that's when you really have to have a couple of touchstones around you, some sensible people uh, to reach out to. And if... I know I'm preaching this to death, but if you have that foundation built up inside of you, even when you rock off of it a little bit, it's always there waiting for you. And even if in your darkest times, uh, our psyche needs to rest. We have to process so much emotionally, especially if you're empathic. If you're empathic and you, I don't care if you're sitting in a cabin in the woods alone, Ted Kaczynski, okay? You know and you feel and you sense what is going on out there. No TV, no newspapers, uh, no internet, no nothing. You freaking sense it. Uh, you know what the condition out there, the collective consciousness. So that's something that no matter how much you isolate yourself, it's just always there. And a lot of people are just hyper aware and hyper sensitive to it. So nurture yourself. Learn to understand the negative factors in your life, in your day to day life, people you know, situations, circumstances. If you really hate your job, if it's eating your soul out, give it some good, hard, heartfelt thought and do something about it. Like walk away from it. That's what I did. Yeah. Walk, <laughs> walk away from it and live on a rock in the middle of the creek. <laughs> That's what I did. I, I don't know if it's worked out to, for the best for me or not. No, Bon, I think that, that segues into a whole nother conversation that would be cool sometime. Is um, We got about 18 minutes, so uh, okay, go, no, ahead, go ahead and segue. I'm, letting you, I'm just letting you run with this, girl. I'll try to do a con condensed version. Um, those of us, okay, those of us in these rabbit holes here, uh, what I see and what I have observed in my work in the Truther Movement 
uh, is how people react and cope or not with this. Um, my hat's off to you, Hambone. Oh my gosh. I mean, to, to, to wake up to all that, it, it takes so much gonads to just, it's one thing to think about it or talk about it, or but for somebody to literally make that turning point and, and do it like you did. And I know you're still going through adjustment periods of, of what do I do now? You know, how do I do this? Uh, a lot of people are, but my point is, I see people get where we are and either they don't have a plan of how to shift their life from what they thought life was about to what they now know life is about. What the hell do I do with this? And, and, and how do I eat and live in this, this thing that I can't have anything to do with anymore? This thing being, you know, the system. Um, and a lot of them end up with, with substance abuse. So there's a lot of alcohol and drug abuse, which is perfectly well understandable how, you know, some people end up. This is the t- bottom of my second margarita that we're. <laughs> <laughs> That's got some good. I won't, I won't fire up a bulb because I don't know. I, I'm never going to do one of these conversations when I'm high. There's no telling. But but I admit this is this is one of my this is one of my pleasures in life. But I, I'm glad you brought that up because that's kind of where I wanted to go with this is like understanding the difference between you know recreational use and and casual use versus a deeper level of things an escape a total escape mechanism that that's keeping you from pulling yourself together and deciding how to live outside the system, get, yeah. having a plan, building that foundation. You are the only person, or maybe some people close around, and I'm not saying you, but I'm in general, uh, that know when you're at that tipping point. So there's a safe zone in there. I'm not saying, to, you know, don't <laughs> use your substances to enjoy life a little more and to cope with it a little more, but there's a tipping point there. So I see people go down that road to the point of no return, and it's so sad because there's so many wonderful, highly intelligent, brilliant people who are just lost down that path, and it is really hard to come back from. Um, or people, you know, fall somewhere in the middle, or they, they crawl out in the woods and nobody ever sees or hears from them again, Tetsky. But <laughs> it's like... Um, that's a, that's a, you know, these, these, these are all choices. I don't know if I would say they're all valid choices, but I'm not going to preach about anyone making any of those choices. We're, we're all doing what we can to react to this. It's about helping the masses, the tribe, the community as a whole. Some people are going to need some more coping skills and guidance, you know, through this. Um, there's just these different paths that people choose to cope with it. Some of them keep one foot in the system, you know, they keep their house and their mortgage and their uh, family life. And, and, you know, it, that can, some people can do that. Some people, it drives them nuts, yeah. you know, it, it starts eating at their soul and, and, but yet they're still doing it. So it's going to continue to eat at their soul. Um, so everybody has to assess their self, look at your own, uh, personality strengths and weakness, weaknesses. Um, be very, very honest with yourself about how you're wired and how you function, uh, what your weaknesses may be that are causing you uh, some problems, and uh, learn a lot of psychological, emotional uh, coping skills and build that foundation. Find that balance in your life when, when you can sense that it's out of balance. Um, and once you work on these things in whatever way that works for you, uh, it does become a lot easier because it becomes like a familiar friend, you know. So when when you when you veered off of it, which I do all the time myself, it was why I'm preaching it. When you veer too far away from it, you have you develop a sixth sense for that imbalance, and and you go back to your old friend. Oh yeah, this is how the pie chart gets cut up for my energy, and and you know how much is is being tolerated from what, and you know the give and take that's going on in my day to day energy flow. So. Uh, I think that's really important it, for everybody to kind of custom cater that to how it fits into them and their life and their world and their circumstances. Keep us together. Keep, I mean, it's a tribe. It's a community. Um, let's help each other through it. 
That's as I uh, keep saying, we're we're all we've got. Uh, I mean, this is why I offer this forum. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm putting this information out there and offering this forum to to I anybody who's feeling like I'm feeling, and mm -hmm. and you know, feel free to come on here and and comment and. Um, you know, but I don't. I, I just don't. I don't know what else to do. It's just like we all just need to find what we can do to. It, it's all part of a coping mechanism, uh, and so we're we're we're, that's, we're we're all doing what we can do. Now, I think we were talking about this. I think you should start your own YouTube channel. <laughs> Um, I've considered it, you know, I may toy around with it a little bit. I need to, um, make room in my life by getting some things off my plate, uh, and completed and finished, uh, that I feel like I would feel like I had the time and energy to do it properly. You know, I, I don't want to start something and then half-ass do it and then fade away. You know, he's kind of. I've been I mean, half-ass doing this for five thousand videos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, doing it for how many years, Sam Bob? I, 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 you know, I, I never can remember. Am I am, am I going into my seventh or eighth birthday here in a couple of months? <laughs> I, I, I think it's eight years. Yeah, I observe people like you that are out there uh, publicly doing this and the stick with itness of it and, and through your own personal, uh, God knows, you know, your personal trials and tribulations, you're still on your platform. You're still putting, putting things out there. And uh, I observe people like you and I'm like, well, what does it take to, to you know, to, to keep the passion that projected? We all live with this passion in us all the time. But, uh, but, but to commit to, I know that you and I both share an affinity for uh, this technology in our lives on such a deep level. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, you're, that you're willing to tolerate what you have to you know, deal with with that to keep the show on the road. And so my hat's off to you. I salute you. Oh, my God. I mean, it's just amazing how much, um, how much passion and authentic energy that you keep pouring into what you're doing. Uh, you and others like you, you mentioned Michael Rupert earlier, you know, God rest his soul, man, what, what a guy. Um, so I have the utmost respect for people who are able to keep that much energy into doing what you're doing and reach but, but as you're, you're, you're not ready to, to join me on the, on the YouTube and, and your other, your, your Northern twin, Sandy, you know, she's, She's into YouTube now. I, I don't know if I convinced her to start her own YouTube channel or not. I think she might be ready to slap me for talking her into it. But I may have some chit chats with Sandy because I, I became aware of Sandy obviously through the Humpty Dumpty tribe through you, and I started exploring her um, her channel a little bit. She does the uh, environment. And, um, Coffee House, which is such a cool name. I love that. Now, what was the name of your YouTube going to be if you do if you do get one? We talked about what the good name for you, right? Okay, it's going to be, and nobody's allowed to steal this out from under me, is the Curmudgeon Cafe. <laughs> uh, my YouTube channel is going to be the Curmudgeon Cafe. <laughs> the cafe is going to have a playlist of multiple different menu items. <laughs> Rage, uh, grief, uh, existential despair with a ch with a chaser uh, of sick, twisted, black, exactly. ironic humor. A little <laughs> fatalism <laughs> sprinkled in there. <laughs> it was one I mentioned to you spontaneously, just totally spontaneously the other day. I was like, "Oh shit, I need to, I need to write that down." Um, it was something about coffee. It had something to do with coffee, but it was one of the menu items. But it, it was like <laughs> coffee rage or something like that. <laughs> so that's my format for my non-existent YouTube channel. It only lives in my little head, my little heart. So thank you for putting that out publicly now. I um, we're planting a seed, didn't you tell me? Uh, didn't you tell me a half hour ago we need to start planting seeds? So I'm planting a seed with uh, with Sandy K here. I, I think the Curmudgeon Cafe. She's actually being quite. You're, you're being quite reserved. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Well, I, I, 
here's the thing, Hambo, I mean, and you've talked to me in person, you know, when I get my passion ruffled up, when I get on topics, just like you do, just like you on your rock, I will start yelling and cussing, <laughs> you know, I just will, and a curmudgeon cafe is going to be full of that shit. All right. Now, you know, but I have to stay focused. This is my first time doing any kind of really interview i've done a, you know joined a couple of live streams and stuff like that before but um you know i'm not used to discussing this stuff sort of you know in real time if you will uh, uh, on camera so i'm having a lovely conversation with you and i know i've yacked your ear off as usual um a lot of a lot of i call them my thinkings i have a lot of thinkings and my thinkings just lead to other thinkings and, and then the mouth just keeps you know keeps Delivered. But I bet you can get uh, get radicalized pretty quick. I, oh, yeah. I I met up with Sandy in a karaoke bar on the on the side of the road in Inglis, Florida. Uh, <laughs> it was it, it was pretty brutal in there. I have to admit that the karaoke. What was that place called? The Shrimp Basket. Shrimp Landing. <laughs> in England, I, I mean, I don't live far from there, but I have never even passed through that little mud hole of a town. <laughs> um, I got a, you got a speeding ticket in Texas on the way here. I got a heinous speeding ticket on the way, you know, four miles from leaving Hambone at dinner. I got a $253 speeding ticket on a dark, open country road. My fault, really. I, I was just, I was kicking at home. I really was. I didn't mean to be speeding, but it was pretty bad. Man, was, dealing, dealing with those tickets and all that shit. It, I'm still I'm still dealing with that ticket that I got a month. I just got this package of crap from the Texas State yeah. Police in the mail today, man. So I'm I found still out, dealing with that shit. I went out through that experience. I haven't called him yet. I've got to call the clerk of court or whatever here in this county. Um... <laughs> Was a very nice officer, and he was nice. He was our age, you know. He, he made he acknowledged, that, you know, that we're all from the same generation here. <laughs> he was he was super nice, and I was just funny and cracking jokes with him. I was you know, totally guilty of everything, so I just didn't even argue with him. But uh, he kind of gave me the rundown, and he mentioned that I guess in this county they have it set up where they that he didn't mention reducing any fees. But you can file for a, um, a community service time. And I'm actually looking into that because I think it would be interesting. Hell to, yeah. I mean, it, it'll force you to do something. We should be doing this community service anyway, uh, as we all know. That's something that's been heavy on my mind for a while, too. As you know, I'm renovating my house and have been for a long time. I'm trying to get that finished so that I have time and energy to apply myself to other things. Um, and one of which was, you know, to be more of service to others in some capacity. So that's been on my mind, and this is kind of, you know, my So it's kind of that. interesting that the, the global police state has, uh, has perhaps set another wheel in motion that you're going to end up being involved in your own community. I'm telling you, as soon as it came out of this, <laughs> that's exactly how it looked at it. I was like, oh, the universe is, okay, okay, we're, we're cool, let's do this. So, yeah, me, 56 years old, I'm going to go do my community service next to God knows who else doing their community service. Have you picked a place like a animal wildlife rescue center or a recycling center or a... That's what I have to call them about and find out what my option, what they'll offer me as options for that, um, you know, and, and pick something cool and fun. But speaking of the recycling, Hambo, and if we have still a minute or two, you can cut me off anytime you know that. Uh, We're light, closing in. Okay, today, for example, this is something that happened today about the recycling and the environmental issues and, and, you know, doing your own thing in your own community, you know, as, as well as globally. Um, I went to my local I canceled my private contractor for sanitation pickup and all that crap um, let me back up this uh, one year ago the private company that was doing my trash pickup all right, we're at 54 minutes it canceled my canceled my <laughs> recycling canceled recycling service then the city itself which I don't live in canceled their recycling service <laughs> a few months ago they stopped taking any glass um, Today, I went to my local uh, county location to drop my trash and do my recycling without the glass uh, and, and talked to a wonderful attendant there about that. 
and just kind of started addressing some issues about the location of the center and, right. and why they stopped doing that. They stopped taking glass in the entire county because he, quote, they can't find a vendor to right. take recycled glass. So anyway, we need to follow up on things like that right here in our home bags. Right. What's my point? Okay, well, we are at uh, 55 minutes here, so we're winding down, and as I uh, wrap up every one of these uh, voices from the Doomosphere uh, chats, okay, give us your, so let's say instead of talking to Hambone Littletail, you're, you're on uh, network TV, and you have a 60-second soundbite to get your message to the clueless morons out there in TV land, give us your, uh, as Donald Trump is uh, giving his unadulterated horseshit speech tomorrow night, let's hear your 60 second takeaway to the planet. My takeaway to the planet here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe TV um, <laughs> is. And thank you, Hambone, for our jabber, and we get cut off, but thank you so much for having me on here, uh, is community, guys. Community. I don't care which side of the aisle they're on. You're, you're, we're all a community. We are a species that's a community on this globe. So start looking at each other with that perspective in that framework. What can we do together? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to dwell on the same thing and beat the, beat the dead horse. I've already said it all. But think of yourself as a tribe. Think of yourself as a part of a community. Support each other. There, some of us need help getting through this. We are all on a different path, on a different stage, all the same road on the path. So pick up people where they are. There's a time, you know, 10 years ago and 20 years ago, that my lifestyle was very different than it is now because I was on a journey. The people that you're running into next to you are on their journey help them with that plant the seeds you can you know it doesn't need to be conflict after conflict after conflict especially within our community so do what you can stay out of the drama stay out of the negativity clean up your life your, your personal life build that foundation get yourself strong when you can take the punches you can take the hits you can take it and you can soldier on okay there you go. That was a little longer than 60 seconds, but we'll, uh, but, but uh, I, there is no editing of this. So anyway, as the clock winds down, uh, I am going to head out and play some music with my clueless, lovable friends on this beautiful night. If I, if I can find my harmonicas, and I am going to stick around for a minute after we hang up, but okay. I just want to thank our alert tribes member. Sandy K for this uh, this enlightening conversation about how she got down this rabbit hole and some good advice. And my advice is to get out there and enjoy it while you still can. So Sandy K, it has been fun. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. I will be back tomorrow with my uh, Hambone State of the Planet address when I when I figure it out. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> Bye, guys.